Hi friends, welcome back to my channel Testing Mini Bytes. I am your friend Amazon Shaktivel, and in this video, we will see about lambda expressions. Again, guys, I recommend you to watch the previous video about anonymous inner class so that you can understand what is lambda expression in a more meaningful way. Again, if you haven't done that, I will try to cover that in a nutshell. But you know, I prefer or I recommend you to watch the previous video before heading to watch this particular video. Right? So we're gonna see uh, what is lambda expressions, uh, how it forms the basis for our functional programming in Java. And we'll also see about a new operator that is introduced in Java 1.8, right? So that is called as Lambda operator, right? We have uh, arithmetic operators like uh, your plus, minus, you know, multiplication models, right? So same way we have some new operator that is called Lambda operator. They're gonna does the job of functional programming, right? So we're gonna see that in detail. And we are also gonna see what are the condition that needs to match to use Lambda expression in Java, right? So you have three condition. One is your method return type should match and your parameters to that particular method should match and your interface should have only one abstract or any implemented methods. I guess you might not be knowing what is these three conditions as of now, but I'm pretty much sure at the end of this particular video, you should be in a good position to understand what it is, right? Without wasting much time, let's get it started. Good. So I have an interface now, right? So I have an interface named as iPrintable, right? So it's always a good uh, you know, recommendation to name your uh, interface with an objective. So the printable is enough. I have added I so that I can clearly understand it's an interface, right? So, so I have named it as iPrintable. So it has one method that is public void print, right? You can also mention whether this is abstract or not. Yeah. So again, by default, all the your methods are uh, public and abstract so you don't have to mention it specifically right so i also have a test runner which just has one uh, you know main method right so what i'm going to do uh, in in our conventional way if you want to provide an implementation for this particular abstract method you have to create a class right so let's say this printable printing is happening in your log file so let's say log file impl so impl indicates implementation right so we are we are providing a class that gonna define how this printing is gonna happen in your log file so so basically we are creating a log file implementation class so you have to implement this particular interface i printable okay once you do that it will force you to add the unimplemented methods right here you can provide your uh implementation so right? basically i'm going to do sys out and then uh, uh, you know uh, maybe using conventional way right conventional way of uh, doing things right so this is my conventional way of doing things right by creating a class implementing an interface just to override this particular method but from java one point, uh, you know, uh, before Java 1.8, if your intention is just to provide an implementation for this particular method, uh, you know, you are creating this class, right? The only purpose of this class is to provide the implementation for this particular method. So before 1.8, what people do, they also can create uh, anonymous inner classes, right? So, so what I can do, so I am creating a new uh, reference object, I uh, call to new, I, so, log file input so this is your conventional way right so obj dot print so this is your conventional way of doing things so let's write it here this is your conventional way and the second way is using i printable let's name it as obj1 equal to new i so if you press control and space, your IDs will give you a suggestion. This is anonymous inner type, right? So I have explained this in detail, right? So instead of providing all the implementation there, you can provide the implementation here. So I'm providing this out uh, from anonymous, anonymous inner class, something like this, right? So you're providing the implementation inside, you know, this particular class. Again, guys, this is a method method is wrapped inside a particular curly braces so this is a class right so we have a method here that is wrapped inside a curly braces so this is a class this class is having a name but this class doesn't ha has a name so this is anonymous right we don't have a new name here so we are just using the uh, i printable reference right so this doesn't have a name and so we call it as anonymous right 
anonymous and this class is present inside this particular test runner class so we can call it as inner class so anonymous plus inner we can call it as anonymous inner class right so this is your anonymous inner class good this is your second way of doing things before 1.8 if your intention is just to uh, override this particular method apart from reusing you don't have to create a class you can directly create an anonymous inner type okay so this is your uh, way so let me move this here yeah now from functional programming how we can code this in a functional programming way right so let's copy this whole stuff right from java 1.8 your compilers are very smart right let me name it as obj2 again you can also do bj1 dot print okay good so from 1.8 your java compilers are very smart okay it can do some type inferences what do you mean by type inferences guys if you notice my left side is i printable so obviously my right side is also i printable because it doesn't has any class implementation so far okay so obviously this if your left hand side is i printable your right hand side is i printable right so and then you also have only one method right there is only one method that's of written type y right there is only one method that's of written type y so these things are already here okay java compiler can understand okay this information so from here to here java can already understand from the interface itself from your left hand side itself java compiler can understand all this information so i'm going to remove all of them right these are unnecessary code in the previous you know in the anonymous inner class these are unne unnecessary code we call it as boilerplate codes so these are all boilerplate codes right we are going to remove it please guys notice there is a curly brace in the 26th line we are removing that as well so when we are removing that one curly brace i'm also removing the closing uh, curly brace as well okay now if you notice it's still showing error because we need to tell java that we are going to use a lambda way of writing the code so this is your lambda operator that indicates we are using lambda expression here right and then if you notice there is only one line of statement here right then there is no need to mention your curly braces right you can directly write this in one single line right so as simple as that so i can also do obj2 dot print okay and here i can tell uh, i am a lambda expression something like this okay okay you can write like this right let's try to run the test and then see what's happening so you, this is your conventional way of doing the things okay and then this is your uh, from anonymous inner class using anonymous inner type and this is your functional way of writing the code you have in all the ways you are get able to get your implementation in all the ways we are just overriding this particular method so this is more readable this is more readable than this right obviously yes and if you notice to use a lambda expression we need to satisfy three things one is your method parameters right the parameters to the method should match here right so this is this is not accepting any parameters so this also is not accepting any parameters so there is a match there is a first condition that your parameters to the method to the abstract method should match abstract method abstract method and your lambda expression should match okay so and then we have the second condition that your return type of this particular abstract method is void and it has to match with the return type if you notice there is no return statement so obviously java compiler can understand it is not returning anything so you don't have to mention that this is a void so your return type of your abstract method and lambda expression should match right that is the second one and then at the end it also needs to be a interface with just only one abstract method abstract or unimplemented method if you notice our i printable is having only one abstract method right so this is the three condition that you need to satisfy to use a, a lambda expression in java right so we will learn more about it we will learn what is functional interface you know how we can use a different return types how we can increase the parameters and other stuff in the next video but for now just understand i am going to give a complete overview again okay 
we have an i printable interface that has only one abstract method in the conventional way of doing things we have to create a class implement the interface and then override the method to provide our custom implementation this is the conventional way of doing things i mean people can also use an anonymous inner class to define you know uh, this particular behavior of this particular method so instead of if your purpose is just to uh, you know override this method and not to use use this reuse this class for the future future purpose then you can create an anonymous inner class right using this and then provide your implementation from java 1.8 your 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 java compiler is very smart and they can infer a lot of things so these informations are already available so we have removed them right and then we are removing we are also removing one curly brace and so that we are also removing one close curly brace so after that we are introducing a new operator in between them so it becomes a part of lambda expression right so this is the lambda expression which is actually synonymous to your method implementation so we can call a lambda expression as an anonymous method as well we will see more about that in detail but in next video we will see about what is functional interface so, thanks for listening to me guys uh, you all have a very good day i'll see you in another great video tata bye